Today, I would like to share with you a word, and uh, it is a, I'm going to start with a parable where it tells us the story of, uh, or in terms of how Jesus was uh, mentioning a parable, right? And uh, here today, to highlight, I would like to share with you sowing the seed of faith, right? So, uh, and when we talk about sowing, sowing seeds, and in the Bible, if you remember Jesus at one point, uh, he was teaching the people, right? So as you know, that when Jesus, he, wherever Jesus walks and wherever he goes, uh, Jesus often inspired the people, right? And more importantly, teaching those things. And through some of the uh, parables that he, he you know, shares certain things and he relates to stories. And one of these stories that Jesus Jesus shared uh, to the people, to the multitudes, was about the importance of doing the right thing. And really, uh, the whole parable surrounds the uh, or illustrates the sower and the seed, right? So, and here we kind of see that how Jesus explained that the sower, right, or the farmer in this case, was spreading the seeds, right? It represents that the farmer is sort of the laborers, right? Sowing um, the, essentially here, it's talking about the word of God, right? So if, if you can turn into your Bible this evening, let's kind of go over this scripture and then we'll try to understand what Jesus is trying to tell the multitudes then, right? Of course, what Jesus mentioned in these parables, it applies to us as Christians today, right? So if you can uh, go to Luke chapter 8, we'll read from verse 5 to 8. Luke chapter 8, verse 5 to verse 8, right? So here it tells us, a farmer went out to sow his seed. As he was scattering the seed, some fell along the path. It was trampled on, and the birds ate it up. Some fell on rocky grounds, and when it came up, the plants withered because they had no moisture. Other seed fell among thorns, which grew up with it and choked the plants. Still, other seed fell on good soil. It came up and yielded a crop a hundred times, or hundredfolds in this case, more than it was sown. When he said this, he called out, whoever has ears to hear, let them hear. Right. So here in Luke chapter 8, verse 5 to 8, it tells us the story of you know, Jesus was explaining to the multitudes that there is this farmer that is sowing the seeds. And really, it's we, we, we don't see any results at this point. right? So, but here, Jesus was trying to tell the multitudes that you know, there is this farmer trying to prepare the ground, right? And we know that sowing seeds merely means that it's it's planting, right? It's the beginning of the season, right? The Word of God uses this metaphor to describe the concept of, uh, in terms of the farmer, trying to achieve something positive, right? So, and we kind of think in olden days, of course, nowadays you've got technologies and you know, you know, to to plant something, you've got machines. But back then, the farmers would spread and and just throw the seeds uh, towards the ground, right? To to plant something, right? So the Bible uses this symbolizes the association between, um, and if you can know that Jesus, he used a lot of metaphor relates to, uh, uh, um. Uh, plants or or you know a, a tree or 
um, uh, plans. Th these are important things. In the olden days, when you are trying to plan something, right, it takes time, right? It takes the right environment, right? And here, in one of Jesus' parables here, he was telling the story as an analogy of how someone would sow the seeds, right? And what can happen to the seeds afterwards, right? Either the seeds will grow into something fruitful or it kind of do not yield a positive result, right? And here we kind of see how Jesus is trying to teach us something here, right? About the different responses when it comes to outreach, when it comes to witnessing, when it comes to evangelism, right? Uh, and I'm pretty sure that at every one of you, you are an ambassador for Jesus, right? When you're in the community, when you're in the schools, when you're in your neighborhood, where when you're at the shops, right? You bear Jesus and his, you're like his representative, you're his ambassador, right? And to be used of God is to be like the farmer that Jesus actually explained. You are the, having conversation with people, right? You're sowing the seed of faith to people, right? And here it tells us that how uh, people respond to the gospel, it, it's got different variation here, right? So yeah, we know that when you are sowing seed or you're trying to plant something, right? It requires the right timing, right? It requires the right environment and perhaps the right nutrients, right? For a tree to grow. And Jesus is telling us here in this parable, no, not every seed that you sow will bear fruit. But there are different contexts here that in spite of not knowing the future or, you know, sometimes we kind of do evangelism or we do certain gathering or have home groups. Sometimes we, 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 we try to figure it out in terms of, okay, if I talk to this person, what is the results, right? So sometimes sowing the seed, it requires time. Other situation, it requires the right context, right? So here, you know, when we plant something, and Jesus here tells us, right? It, when we're trying to spread the seed of faith, spreading the gospel to, you know, telling someone about Jesus, right? These are some of the things that we need to think about, right? There might be people that might reject, you know, what what we uh, uh, try, you know, we try to reach out to them. They might not be ready to receive. But here, Jesus is telling us that, irregardless, we are placing the seed in the ground for the best success, right? So here, you know. Um, it, it tells us that it is very important to understand that when we tell other people Jesus, when we tell other people about the gospel, right, we shouldn't be thinking in terms of how the testimony or the word of God, how it will yield forth results, but rather here, we, our role here as Christian is to just sow the seed and let God take care of the rest, right? I remember many years, uh, or not many years, but recently, uh, my family and I, we, we visited uh, Sakinchang, where there's uh, Paddy Field, and we visited the Paddy Museum and um, kind of learn about how uh, uh, the the paddy or the rice field, right? Now we every single day we eat rice. We don't really think about how, you know, the paddy field, how people uh, 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 harvest the the paddy, right? 
But here, you know, harvesting paddy requires a, a, a very um, a unique climate. And often you kind of see paddy, they thrive most in tropical countries, right? So, and you kind of see that the different contexts, right? The, the right nutrients, the, the right weather, it actually helps uh, um, the farmer to look forward to harvesting, right? But of course here, if we kind of look back at how Jesus was trying to tell us a story about the farmer who went out to sow the seed. Now the farmer when was, when the farmer is trying to think uh, about sowing the seed, he didn't really think of, okay, um, now I have a hundred seeds here. Am I going to yield uh, or expect uh, uh, this hundred seeds is going to bear the results? No, the, the, the farmer actually is trying to, again, believing that, okay, the seed that I sow will yield forth results. But I'm, I'm you know, here, the last verse, it's important, right? Because Jesus reiterate that whosoever has ear to hear, let them hear, right? Which highlights how uh, uh, people respond to Jesus' teaching with faith and obedience, right? So the parable here, it tells us that the seed is the word of God. Now we know that nowadays, uh, we see that uh, there are new people that comes to church and uh, people that we talk to, right? People that we share Jesus to them, right? And these are these are seed of faith that we sow to the people, right? And of course, here the Bible tells us that those by the wayside are the ones who hear, right? But again, the birds will come and eat them up. And, you know, whenever you're doing the will of God, when, whenever you're sharing God's love, you're sharing the gospel to people, the devil tries to come and take away the word out of these people's heart. Perhaps it's fear, perhaps it's doubt, right? Perhaps it's resistance, but it's okay, right? Because here, Jesus died on the cross to save everyone, right? But here it is up to us as followers of, followers of Christ to spread the word of God, right? But here it tells us also the ones on the rocks, right? Seed that falls in between the rocks. Now, these are individuals that here, they receive the word with joy. But again, they might experience God's love and they might experience come to church and experience uh, 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 God's spirit, but yet there is no roots, right? I mean, if you kind of try to plant something on a rock, right? Now, any plant, or I would say most of these plants, it can only survive in good soil. You don't expect a, a plant or a tree to grow on a pile of rocks. It just doesn't make sense, right? But here, Jesus is telling us that, Jesus is telling us the seed fell in between these rocks. These are hot grounds, right? Which, of course, there is this glimpse of hope that maybe we can see some roots. But, of course, in these hard grounds, it is hard for the, the seed to grow roots, right? So, of course, these, you know, sometimes people, they, for any circumstances, right, they might be drawn away from God because of temptation or the world. But, of course, here, Jesus also tells us that the ones that fell among the thorns are those who, when they have heard, but yet they've been drawn away by different circumstances, right? So we also see that when we talk about sowing seeds of faith, right? Or sowing 
seeds to grow a plant, we see that the plant needs to mature in due time, right? And this only requires the plant to fall on good ground, good soil, right? Now, of course, these are telling, the parable here is telling us that Jesus is mentioning that, you know, when the seed falls on good ground, that's where it's able to set roots and to grow. Now, as Christians, this, it resonates with each and every one of us, right? You know, the day that we, you know, perhaps one one day someone witnessed to you or you heard the gospel, right? And you've been filled with the Holy Ghost. That That's where, you know, that seed is able to take root and to grow and to develop, right? So here in the parable here, uh, Jesus is trying to reveal why some people, why those who hear the gospel, some might not make it till the end, right? And they're, they're but here Jesus is trying to focus on those who has ear to hear, right? Let them hear, right? Let them grow, let them develop as Christians. But it is important to start you know, irregardless of these situations, start sowing the seed of faith, right? When you see someone uh, um, maybe in the market, right? Maybe at school, you know, trying to sow the seed of faith, to tell them about the gospel, to be that witness in your community, right? Again, here we, we know that people who are called to, uh, or uh, by God and have the Holy Spirit, it enables them to uh, to tell others right the goodness of God. So the parable here it, it kind of illustrates the importance right of the church as a body to to bear witness to what Jesus uh, uh, has done to each and every one of our lives to bear witness to. To be testimony, the testimony to others, right? And of course, um, we can see that when a farmer places the seed on the ground here, it tells us that, you know, the hope here is that that seed will one day bear fruit. Now, of course, if you kind of see how in the parable, some seed fall on hard ground, right? Now, of course, Sometimes we try to witness to someone, perhaps it's, it's not the right time, right? Maybe their heart is still hard, hardened, right? And it requires time for God to, to touch them, right? Perhaps people might go through certain situations that, you know, during those times, their heart is, soften, is softened so that God is able to lead you as the mouthpiece, as to his witness, you know, to, to spread the gospel to them, right? So I, I remember many years ago, I tried to witness to a, a student and, um, the, well, this student um, is hard of hearing, right? So, and he, he's part of the, the deaf community, right? Uh, but this student uh, came to me and um, uh, uh, I tried to reach out to him, try to witness to him. And uh, initially it was a little struggle, right? Because again, uh, uh, to communicate and to really uh, uh, walk him through Bible study was a little more challenging, right? But then again, um, this student... Um, has a lot of question, right, regarding baptism uh, in the name of Jesus and, uh, you know, speaking in tongues, right? So receiving the Holy Ghost. So um, going through those lessons, and I remember we spent uh, quite some time, right, going through the Bible study and, you know, that itself is sowing the seed, right? Now, of course, during the period of time, uh, and as you know, bearing 
witness to this student. Yeah, I want, I mean, do I want to rush things? Of course, I want him to understand the importance of baptism in Jesus' name, right? But then again, I realized that Jesus was uh, uh, teaching me something here, right? That in due time, this individual is going to receive, to understand the importance of baptism in Jesus' name, right? But my job here is not to, is, is to bear witness and to continue, right? Continue to nurture and continue to sow the seed of faith, right? Now, of course, these students, uh, after a few months of going through the Bible study and to ground it in the word, um, one day, uh, he, he mentioned to me that, you know, I, I, I really understand uh, 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 the importance of baptism in Jesus' name, right? Now, this is back in Rochester. And of course, we baptize him in the name of Jesus, right? And, um, and after baptism and going through the rest of the Bible lesson, and he told me that I would like to, uh, uh, you know, God called me to go back to my hometown in Indiana right? Uh, the state of Indiana. So he moved back to Indiana and, and started a ministry where he reached out to individuals uh, um, in the deaf community, right? So here, you know, should I have rushed the process, right? It, it might not have yield uh, uh, the results that Jesus have expected, right? Now, our, our role here is to just facilitate, right? To be that farmer, just to sow the seed of faith. But it is always up to God to touch these individuals, right? To move these individuals into the, the perfect ground that he wants to nurture, right? And of course, we can, you know, the Bible tells us that how just one seed, it can bear hundredfolds, right? You will not know whoever that you witness to, they might be the next Apostle Paul, right? Now, we know that Apostle Paul was able to reach more people to, to or to win people to the Lord because of Ananias, right? Ananias, he sowed the seed, but you know, during that time, I'm pretty sure that when when God revealed to Ananias, right, go to this street, there's an individual called Saul that you need to, you need to sow the seed of faith. I'm pretty sure that Ananias didn't think that, oh, this individual named Saul is going to be the great apostle Paul one day that will bring the gospel to, to Asia. I don't think, in fact, Ananias was thinking, oh my goodness, Saul, is it the person that tr tries to kill Christians? Is that the individual that, you know, uh, is trying to persecute people like me? Right? But irregardless, Ananias decided that, you know what, my role here is not to play God, right? My role here is just to do what God wants me to do as a Christian. I'm here to bear witness, right, to Saul, and I'm here to just share with him the importance of baptism in Jesus' name, right? My role here is to tell him about the goodness of God, right? My role here is not to condemn Saul. You, oh, Saul, you've been killing Christians, right? Oh boy, you're not going to make it to heaven, right? Our role is not to judge people. Just like Ananias, our role is just to bear witness, to share the love of God, to share the gospel, to share about the importance of baptism in Jesus' name, right? To share to these individuals that there is hope in Jesus, right? There is a future in Jesus, right? There's God has a plan for their lives, right? So just as how the parable that Jesus is trying to tell us, right? The farmer places the seed on these grounds, right? Now, we only hear that those seeds that fall on good grounds, 
it kind of bear fruits, not just bearing, not just harvesting, but we also see that that one seed was able to return multiple folds, right? So but just to encourage you, right? As Christian, you know, sometimes we, we, we might not see the hunger of people around us, but our role here is not to, to judge whether these individuals are hungry or not hungry, whether they are ready or not ready to receive Jesus. But our role here is to just to be there to sow the seed, right? Now, in fact, today, uh, I was being reminded, right? You know, sometimes it's good to have reminders, right? Uh, it's good to have reminders in, 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 in our lives, uh, uh, especially, you know, brothers and sisters that could encourage you. And today, uh, someone uh, 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 texted me and they mentioned that, hey, um, I've got a group of colleagues that, you know, I'm going to get dinner with with my group of colleagues and uh, would like to invite you to, you know, come here and to, just to meet some of my colleagues. So, um, you know, initially I told this individual, I was like, uh, I, I I don't know, like, uh, well, it's got to take out some time. And uh, it's, it's, it's kind of busy, it's closing to Christmas. And, and this, this individual from church told me that, you know what, uh, you know, just if, if you come here, you're able to get to know these individuals and it's a good outreach. It's a good uh, uh, opportunity for you to, to you know, tell, maybe if there's an opportunity to tell them about Jesus, it's it's great. And, and that just struck me. Oh, wow. I, you know, I just fall back a little, right? I, there is, before I even sow the seed, I already have a preconceived notion that, okay, these individuals might not be interested in knowing Jesus, right? So instantaneously, I told this individual, you know what, I'm, I'm going to be at the dinner. I'm going to meet this individual and I'm going to be that witness, be that mouthpiece that God is going to use me. And hopefully, you know, we might not know where these, you know, uh, 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 gathering or meeting these new people might lead. But all we can know is that God has placed us at such a time. God has placed us in these situations, right? It might be the right season for them. It might be the right time for them. They might be thirsty for something greater. But it is not up to us to judge whether it's the right context or it's the right season. All we need to do is just to sow the seed, right? And to trust in the Lord that Jesus is in his timing, right? He's able to touch these individuals' heart, right? So here we see that how, again, sometimes when we talk, we tell other people about the gospel. You know, other people might, some people might not be receptive, right? Of course, here, Jesus is not trying to tell us that, okay, it's a waste of time to sow the seed because it's the waste of time to tell people about Jesus, about Christ or Jesus and the gospel and importance of baptism, right? Because, you know, well, some of the seed actually fall on these stony places, right? Or some of these seeds might be eaten by the birds, right? But here, the focus here that Jesus is trying to tell us that you know, in spite of these different environment or, or these different uh, 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 situations that seed might not bear roots, but hey, there, there is this bunch of seed that lands on good grounds, right? And here we understand that it is under these situations. Now, sometimes we might not know people are going through, you know, uh, 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 situations in their life that they 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 might be looking for an answer, right? But here we know that God is constantly leading us to to people who have been praying, perhaps, right, for God to show them an answer. Now, in fact, when we go back to the story of Ananias and and Saul, you know, Ananias was wasn't really 
you know, uh, uh, thinking too much, right? That, in fact, when Ananias found Saul, Saul was actually actually praying that God is going to send someone to share with him the gospel. So you might not know that today you are that Ananias, right? That God wants to lead you. Perhaps there's individuals who are crying for God to do a miracle in your life. Perhaps there are situations that you're going through, right? Perhaps there were colleagues. I've got colleagues that I invited them for Christmas to, to come by and get her, you know, have a meal. So we, we might not know what circumstances that people are going through, but what we know is God has chosen each and every one of us to be his mouthpiece, to bear his witness, right? So here we see that, you no, know, the seeds, they fall on fertile and rich soil, which produce a crop that here the Bible tells us, right? You know, for example, you kind of see how when Ananias reached out to Paul or Saul, you know, Paul became greatly used by God, right? To reach out to the rest of the believers, right? In the first century church. So here we kind of see how, you know, we sow a seed. You know, God might multiply through that seed of faith. God is able to multiply, right? I'm pretty sure you heard situations where, you know, pastor uh, in his early ministry, he, he did sow the seed of faith, right? In some of you, you know, others might have gone into different ministries, right? Might have right now doing ministries in other countries. I mean, these individuals, again, when they first came to Christ, I don't even know that pastor knew that one day these individuals are going to be greatly used by God, right? Pastors, right? Evangelists. But all he knew was that I'm going to just teach a Bible study. I'm pretty sure you heard pastor mention that in his early ministry, he usually mentors and and teach Bible study and to, to ground individuals, right? Usually you kind of teach one year of Bible study, grounding that individual, sowing the seed of faith. And, and that is important, right? Because here, it is through these situations that God is able to do a good work in this, these, we talk about it's the seed that falls into fertile soil, right? And God is going to bless it and to lead it to produce a harvest one day, right? Now, in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, reading from verse 5 to 8, right? When we talk about how Paul, you know, by understanding this concept of sowing, sowing the seed of faith, right? And, and Paul knew, Paul knew that, you know, I, I was once that seed of that, that was sown by Ananias. And I'm doing the same to the other followers of Christ, right? Then 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 5, it, it tells us that Paul was telling the, the, the believers that I planted the seed, Apollos watered it, but God has been making it grow, right? So neither the one who plant nor the one who water is anything. But here, it tells us that only God who make things grow, right? So you and I today, you know, irregardless of if you or the individuals that sow the seed or, you know, another brother or sister who waters that seed, right? The growing process when we have new people that comes to church, right? No, but hearing the word of God, going through the Bible study. Perhaps they might miss a few Sundays, right? But whenever they, they're in the presence of God, they are with the people of God, they are growing, right? It is through your testimony and my testimony 
that we are continuously sowing the seed of faith into these individuals, right? And Bible also tells us that in the church, the church is a place that we nurture Christians to help one another grow in Christ, right? In fact, the Bible tells us to edify one another, the edification process, right? To edify one another in the Lord so that we're able to you know, be not just hearers, but doers, right? So, and here it tells us that, you know, in the Bible, it tells us that in Gen Genesis chapter 26, verse 12, right? And even in the Old Testament, we see that how Isaac planted the crops in the land. And the same year, it reaped hundredfolds, right? Now, of course, you know, all these are made possible because the Lord blesses Isaac, right? Of course, you know, Isaac did what God wanted him to do. He All he did was just labor. All he did was just plant, right? And you can understand, Isaac, you know, this is maybe in the Middle East, might not be the best fertile ground, right? But then again, Isaac, irregardless, he just plants. He didn't think twice. He didn't doubt that God in this kind of environment Am I going to be able to grow these plants, right? Or, or, or these harvest the crops, right? But here he believed that, God, you are going to bless. God, you're going to open up the doors, right? God, there, are, there, there is this uh, co-worker that um, is hungry. I know that you're going to open up the doors. I know you're going to use me as your vessel, right? Perhaps there's a relatives, right? Um, and I, I know that uh, many years ago, um, I tried to witness to one of my cousins uh, who, who went to this, um, well, here, she actually came to Sunday school now and then when she was younger. Uh, some of you might even know her. Uh, but, um, you know, she, she at that time when she came to Sunday school, we, we didn't see that, um, you know, she's going to be a Christian. In fact, um, uh, 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 the environment that she grew up in, is, it's, it's just a lot of uh, very superstitious, right? So, but when she went to the U.S. to study, um, uh, uh, she, she, you know, uh, came to, uh, she, she went to a nearby church uh, in her university, right? Uh, and I tried to connect her to, to the campus ministry, right? Uh, we shared with her, uh, 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 you know, uh, speaking uh, and uh, being filled with the Holy Spirit, right? Baptizing in Jesus' name. And uh, in fact, uh, she told me that, you know, I I've been going to church. And so here, uh, we don't know, right? That when, back in the time when she came to Sunday school, right? No one knows that one day she's going to, you know, be going to church and wanting to know more about Jesus, right? No one knows that she will be baptized, right? And no one knows that she is going to, you know, be a believer, right? So here, it is important sometimes that all we do is just sowing the seed of faith, right? And... Here, the Bible also tells us that, you know, knowing that God is going to use you, right? Because without faith, it is impossible to please God. Having faith that, Lord Jesus, you are going to lead me to, to connect with people who are hungry, people who are thirsty, right? And here, it tells us that, you know, when it comes to Outreach, you know, per perhaps we might have the Christmas party. There might be children that will be coming this this Sunday to the Christmas party, right? You know, perhaps uh, we had, you know, different 
events, outreach events, right? Game game day that there are new people that might come to these events. We do not know where God is leading them. But all we can do is to be at this gatherings to be at these Christmas party, right? To be at, you know, uh, the game day and to really just to sow the seed of faith, right? And to spread God's love to our community, right? Because each and every one of us, I believe, is called by Jesus to bear witness, right? And, and, and to spread the word of God to spread God love, God's love in our community, right? So, you know, as, as we kind of come together today to, uh, again, it's a reminder, right? That you know, sometimes we might share uh, uh, the gospel to some of our friends might not be willing to listen to us, or they might laugh at us, right? But you know, continue to to connect. Continue to allow God to use you to, to, be, to be that farmer, right? <laughs> that will sow the gospel into everyone that, that comes into your path, that uh, they're, they're uh, hungry to know the word of God, right? And God is able to open up doors. God is able to lead you to those who are too hungry, right? And just be that willing, uh, be that willing vessel, right? Uh, to allow God to to lead you and to use you, right? And He's able to, again, use it as how He used Ananias, right? To reach out to Paul, you know, we we, we don't know how God is able to connect us with, you know, perhaps people that. He has great plans for them, right? But it always starts with the individual that is willing to be used by God, right? To, to start the fire, right? So um, let's bow our head this evening. And uh, um, I, I hope that this today's word is able to encourage you to not to, you know, sometimes we become discouraged, right? Some people, they come to church and we invited them, come to church. And then we don't see them again, right? Or they might come occasionally and they don't show up. Right? But also there are others that you can see that there's a hunger, right? And whenever they're in the house of the Lord, right? That's where the, God is able to touch them and continue to you know, water, that, water that seed. And before you know it, right? They grow into a tree that could bear fruit, right? they could be the witness, continue what God has planned for His church. Amen. Let's bow our head this evening and let us just pray that God will uh, continue to use each and every one of you to, to be His mouthpiece, right? Because you do not know that where God is going to lead you tomorrow, right? Maybe you might meet someone that God has connected you. And all you need to do is just sow that seed of faith. 